Green, a well-known Tesla hacker who often reveals new features in vehicles through looking deep in firmware updates, claims to have uncovered new details about the upcoming Tesla Model Y E41 through the latest Tesla firmware update. Welcome back everyone. This is Armin Haryan from TorqueNews.com and today I'm going to dive into a Tesla story that is rising eyebrows, sparking debates and leaving people wondering is Tesla about to strip down the Model Y into something far more basic than we ever expected. If you follow Tesla news, you probably know the name Green or Green the only, uh, a well-known Tesla hacker who spends time digging into Tesla software and firmware updates on X. And this week, actually today, Green uncovered something intriguing, strings inside the firmware that suggest Tesla is preparing a new Model Y variant, uh, codename E41. Now, this isn't just a rumor on a forum. Green has a track record of finding features before they go public, and I've reported several of them on our Torque News YouTube channel. He has been uh, right before on autopilot tweaks, infotainment updates, and hidden options. So when he drops a list like this, it's worth paying attention. And I will have his uh, tweet or on X in the description of this video. So here's the headline. The E41 Model Y looks to be a simplified or stripped down version of the Model Y with missing features we've come to consider standard. We're talking no glass roof, simplified interior lighting, single axis seat controls, no power fold mirrors, no heated backup camera, downgraded suspension, and even according to the strings, no tire pressure monitoring system. Yes, you heard that right. Right. No TPMC, tire pressure monitoring system. Now let's pause right here. Could Tesla really ship a car without a tire pressure monitoring system? In the United States and in most markets, TPMS, tire pressure monitoring system, is federally mandated. Since 2007, every new passenger vehicle sold in America has been required to have TPMS. So does this mean Tesla is breaking the rules? No, not necessarily. Sometimes firmware strings use shorthand. It could mean no direct tire pressure monitoring sensors, uh, system sensors, but instead an indirect system that estimates tire pressure based on wheel speed sensors. So Tesla may have a different solution for tire pressure monitoring, or it could mean this is a configuration for a region where the rules differ. But it's one of those details that makes you scratch your head and ask, is this a production plane or just an experiment inside Tesla's code? That brings us to a bigger question now. Why would Tesla even consider such drastic cuts to the Model Y? What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section, friends. Well, the answer may come down to cost. Tesla has been under pressure to expand electric vehicle adoption by offering more affordable models. We've already seen this strategy play out in Mexico, where Tesla launched a cheaper Model 3 with cloth seats, fewer speakers, and no rare display. That version undercut the price, and while some fans called it bare bones, others saw it as a stepping stone toward wider electric vehicle accessibility. Some people just want the stripped down version. So the E41 Model Y might be Tesla's way of applying the same formula to the Model Y. Tesla probably saw this formula working in some places and it wants to apply to the Model Y. A lower cost Model Y would be huge. After all, the Model Y isn't just another electric vehicle. It's the world's best-selling vehicle. It outsold Toyota Corolla last year. Imagine if Tesla could offer a version of it at, say, $35,000 or lower. That could be a game changer for buyers who have been priced out. But at what point do you strip out so much that the Model Y stops being a Tesla and starts being just another budget car? Let me ask you this. If you're shopping for an electric vehicle, would you accept losing things like a glass roof, powerful mirror, and fancy ambient lighting if it meant saving $5,000 or $7,000 on the sticker price? I probably would because I've never used ambient light or glass roof. What about seat adjustability? 
Would cloth seats bother you if it meant getting into Tesla for the first time? Well, it depends on my budget. Drop me a comment because I really want to know where you draw the line, friends. Now, let's look at the risk side. Tesla built its brand as a premium electric automaker. Even when they talked about mass market electric vehicles, there was always a sense of innovation and aspiration. If Tesla starts delivering cars that fit stripped down, could it damage that brand perception? Some readers on Electrex article that was published on Electrex, and I will have the link in the description of this video, argued exactly that, that Tesla risks cannibalizing its own sales by offering a Model Y that feels cheap. It's not just about features, it's about identity. When you buy a Tesla, part of the value is prestige, the technology, and yes, the comfort. But what about some people, or a lot of people, who don't have the budget to do that? Well, they may want to have a Tesla too. What do you think? But there's another perspective. Maybe Tesla knows exactly what he's doing. Look at how Apple sells iPhones. There is a Pro and Pro Max and a standard version that gets fewer bells and whistles but opens the door to millions of phone buyers, Apple phone buyers. Maybe Tesla's better the same. Actually, Tesla's betting the same will work with cars. Some buyers will still go for the long-range dual-motor premium Model Y with all the trimmings, while others will accept a more utilitarian version if it's the gateway to owning an electric vehicle. Let's not forget, there are technical benefits too. Simplified parts mean cheaper production, potentially fewer things to break, and maybe even lighter weight, which could help range. But there is also the flip side. Downgraded suspension could mean a harsher ride, lack of a heated rear camera uh, could mean problems in snowy climates. Uh, I would like to know how Tesla is going to address this. And fewer comfort features could mean higher resale depreciation. Would you still consider it a good deal long term? It's interesting to know. Let me know your thoughts, friends, in the comment section below. This is where the conversation gets really interesting because on one hand, Tesla's stripped down Model Y could be seen as a rescue move to boost demand and affordability. But on the other hand, it could be a strategic masterstroke, giving Tesla a foothold in the emerging markets where buyers prioritize price over premium touches. Think about it. If Tesla wants to compete with BYD in China or with budget electric vehicles in India, a simplified Model Y could be exactly what they need. And Tesla is going for that, apparently. So what should buyers take away from this right now? The first thing is don't assume everything in the, fire, in the firmware leak will make it to the production. So don't assume that. Tesla software has placeholders test configurations and region specific flags. Green's findings on X are credible, but they're not guarantees. The second thing is, if you're holding off on buying a Tesla Model Y because you've heard about this new variant, uh, weigh the trade-offs carefully. Ask yourself, do you want the full Tesla experience or do you just want an affordable electric vehicle with access to Tesla's charging network and software updates. And here is the evergreen, evergreen question, friends, I want to leave with you. One that matters whether you are listening today or a year from now this video. How much are you willing to give up in features for the sake of affordability when it comes to buying an electric vehicle? Because this won't just be about Tesla. As electric vehicle adoption grows, we're going to see more automakers experiment with stripped down versions to lower entry prices. Like I said, many people would just welcome this. Toyota, Honda, Volkswagen, they're all facing the same dilemma. How to strip down their, some of the features on their vehicles so they can appeal to wider markets uh, for people for whom price is a priority. So let me know your thoughts, friends. Uh, would, you be, uh, would you buy a simplified Tesla Model Y if it means, uh, means actually saving thousands of dollars? Or would you rather stretch your budget to keep the premium features that made Tesla stand out in the first place? 
drop me a comment, share your experience, and let's build this conversation um, together. So this is Armin Haryan from uh, torquenews.com. That's it for today's episode. God bless you, everyone. Give us thumbs up if you like this report. And I'll see you soon in our next report. Have a great day.